Hey guys, it's me again, and today we're talking about the a Kushnet uh, mask that here has been remade into a Pulpasan uh, number 1600J. Um, I'm whispering because there's folks around. So, anyway, yeah, let's uh, let's get a good look at the mask. Okay, so this, hey, yeah, that's pretty good. Give me a sec. If you're wondering about our production values, um, part of the production values is food. And I spent all the food money on masks, so now we don't have production value for food. Yes, that's perfect. Okay, so here we have the uh, 1600J as I mentioned. Um, as you can see, it was uh, it is a Pomsat product. Uh, it is also old, um, fairly old, actually. You can, if my hands will stop shaking, see, it's got lenses like a. Uh, like one of the navy masks, or kind of like an M45. Although this would have been one of the first face pieces to use it before any of those. Also, as you can see, this particular example has a uncovered flapper valve. Oh, we have a design system similar to what the M2 had. On its frames, it's got Pulmasan hardware on it. It has these harness bridge straps, as Duke calls them. We don't have that on the temple. Um, do these metal clamps that are Pulmasan specific. These harness bridge straps are not on every single example of this. You'll see a couple without it. So I definitely Pulmasan head harness. The inside of the mask is fairly basic. You can see that it has the marvel of molded Tazat tubes and there's an exhale. Um, there, if we look on the chin, maybe get it to focus. There's a Kushnet right there. That's really neat. Um, but it's currently believed that a Kushnet manufactured these face pieces um, based on intentions they had to help the chemical uh, warfare service. And then the, uh, the chemical warfare service um, tested with them and that's what eventually what led to the M2. Um, Wilson purchased these uh, face pieces, or the face molds, we're not entirely sure, and um, Pomasen purchased the face pieces, or the molds, I believe Pomasen purchased the, the face pieces outright. Wilson may have made their own. Wilson offered it in a couple different varieties, um, almost always with a hose. There might be a version of this from Pomasen with a hose, but we haven't found one. And... Um, Again, there's always minor differences when you get these. The Pulmasan one that, I, or sorry, the Wilson one that I own actually has a spearhead exhale like the Navy diaphragm masks. And that goes, that is protected by a metal cover, which is really a good uh, idea because this is, I could tear this off right now. Um, I'd start crying, but I could. So, yeah, that's basically an overview of it. It's a rather interesting face piece. You can hopefully kind of see the, uh, it's fairly non-standard. It's got a really big forehead to it. Um, now this was because they were just experimenting with injection molding. We were getting past the KTM and the M1, and so they're trying to figure out how to make a, a fully molded face piece. So there's a lot of experimentation. Uh, and a lot of stuff that's on this mask that was eventually found to be useless or not really needed. Uh, obviously, the main feature that stayed is the integrated dot tubes. You look at the M2, the M3, the M4, the M5. Um, hell, arguably, you look at a British Mark IV or Mark V respirator, or even look at like a Swiss SM74 or whatever, and the, the basic design is still there with the parts moved around a little bit. And hell, even maybe the German uh, M65s. Um, 
took a little bit of inspiration. Then again, it, it's kind of fairly obvious to have the canister, to have a chin canister like that, and then have two Tazat, you know, two Tazat tubes, because you have your two uh, eyes. At least you should. I think, I think that's common. Anyway, the two tubes go to the two lenses that go to your two eyes. Um, you know, when you breathe in air, and you know, you guys know the Tazat principle, you're not stupid. Right? So, yeah, that's, that's basically it. It's kind of neat. Uh, I think probably my favorite part of this mask, hands down, is that it's a Pomasan stops accidents, uh, because technically speaking, or at least if you listen to the lawsuits and the lawyer men, they caused more accidents than they fixed, or at least they caused enough accidents for them to be sued out of existence, and, uh, and now they just stopped. Like, they're, they don't, they're not the ones, uh, you know, you know how quickly does the stopper become the stopped, I guess, it's a, Really, it's a metaphor for man's inhumanity, man, I think. You could really, you know, no one really looks at industrial masks. There's a couple people now. It's getting a little bit more popular. No one really looks at them. But I think we can learn a lot about human nature by looking at industrial stuff. Because, I mean, you know, look at who's using industrial stuff. It's people, so it has to be at least somewhat relatable to us, right? But if it's completely alien, then no one would use it at all. So obviously, you know, really you can you can learn stuff about human beings by looking at uh, machinery. I think people forget that. I think when people are talking about two rainforests getting torn down to, to make stuff, they kind of forget that, you know, there's a person doing that. You know, maybe, maybe you should, like, you know, think about that person. You know, obviously, you don't have to agree with them. But, you know, you have to say, well, maybe there's something in that forest that's trying to kill me. Maybe he's trying to kill him. Maybe he provoked it. Maybe he's a son of a bitch. Maybe he called an upstart. Yeah, that's it, upstart. I don't know. I'm I'm no poet. I'm just a guy who sits around and looks at masks and talks too much. But, you know, there's not that many of those people, which means that either A, we're not very useful, or B, um... Maybe there's something that we know that you don't. But if only we know it, and a majority of people don't, then really it can't be essential for human life, is it? Anyway, another interesting thought here while I'm on the topic of, uh... Well, on the topic of nothing. I don't think I've ever had a topic. I'm not good at thesis statements. You can see on the top here, obviously we have the, the threaded bit. Here, excuse me the threaded bit where the mask threads onto the filter uh, and then you have like another threaded bit to that. Let me take this apart again. While I'm doing this I can show you something else interesting is that this is a pulmus and I want to call it kind of a chrysanthemum although obviously it's not because it's not um, Japanese but you'll see this inhale and outlet pattern a lot on pulmus and mask and it's a fairly effective uh, precursor to some of the other inhaler exhale valve designs. Uh, so moving on to the filter, uh, we can see 